Right guys, welcome back. So today, the long awaited video is here. We're going to fit this pop top and I'm going to show you how to do it step by step so you can do your own. Enjoy. So I've just took delivery of the pop top. So as you can see, I had the gloss black all comes in one. So it comes with some box section to bolt down the sides, give um, strength back into the van. You've got the two struts, two hinges, which operate the movement up. You've got the front support bar, which go above your heads basically as drivers. You've got these three fiberglass sections, which are obviously where you cut out to and you run and you rivet back in the side. So these need to be put on to round and smooth them off. You've obviously got a bag of hardware. Obviously all these things you will see being fitted. I'm not going to go into them too much now, but you will see step by step how these work and how they fit, what things like this look like when they're fitted. Less talking, more action. Right, so just to show you this, I wanted to get a head start. One of the first things I've done before I actually start cutting is I've removed that top corner piece there. There's a piece that goes in here. There's one piece which is that, which goes, how did it go? Like that. So that's in there like that kind of thing. And then I've cut that out, so it's like that. So that's had to be cut off and then this part here kind of hooks in there like that and then that top hole there where my finger's moving now there's a rivet in there so I've just used a 4 mil drill bit and drilled the rivet out and removed that and kind of made an open area here because these support bars which I've just painted go along here and they sit on this edge and they run along and I've seen people just smash it down with a hammer but I mean, it's a bit tricky. You can cut it. I mean, I use that. But if you haven't got one of those, you can do it if you just remove like a blade, like an um, axle blade, and put some tape around the one end for a handle. You can get it out. Just take your time. So I just thought I'd show you that. I've unclipped all this wiring harness, which clips along here. Normally be up there like that. I've clipped all that down because you're going to be cutting around here. So I want it out of the way. So that is all loose. Also, along here, these support bars are actually bonded, so the roof skin's bonded to these by a really strong bond. So I've been through with this, and I've actually cut and released all the bond on every single one. That's all off now, so tomorrow, when I get to the point of the roof's completely cut, it will just peel off, and I haven't got to mess with that, leaving these support bars in. So I just wanted to show you that before we start. So let's go to the time lapse now and get going. Right, so that's what you're viewing from, which is actually already soaked. It's great. As you can see, guys, it's a wet day here in England. We're pushing through. We're not letting it stop us. So the first thing we've put in is this support bar. This support bar is supplied with the kit. This mark here sits with in line with that and that mark. See how that is level there coming along and then see how that's the same. You have to tap this in because it's a tight fit. But once that's in, get some tech screws, screw it in, have that touching on the corner there and touching on the corner there of the roof and you want that to be as nice and as tight as possible and then you can start your measurements now i cannot stress enough you know the old saying measure twice cut once exaggerate that we have measured this mark's referenced it i've referenced it we've both double checked it we've both double measured it so we're 100 percent happy so now what you need to do is you find the center of the van so these pressed indents are symmetrical either side so you measure the center from there to there you get your center point put your reference mark on the ceiling now i'm using this it's just a sharpie permanent marker i measure quite a few things and stuff so i'd like to think i'm relatively competent but that's quite a thick tip i recommend using something smaller if, if you're not that familiar with measurements just because you'll see that that mark there can be like up to like three mil and although it, there is give for this kind of job if, if you've got a millimeter marker then you bang on the measurements even more so but i'm quite happy so i don't need to do that but i'd recommend a smaller pen so basically your 
reference the two lines, you get your center point in the van, you mark your center point. This span here for either side is 25 inches. So what you do is you measure off the center point, you measure either side out. So it's 12 and a half from center out, drill a hole, and it's 12 and a half from center out, drill a hole, and then measure it again, and both sides side to side will be 25 inches so when you get to this point it's time to move on so we'll go back to the time lapse if you're a bit concerned about these measurements and you want to double check which i recommend double checking what i've said because every bit of fiberglass panel that's ever been made is always a little bit different but this is the part that's going to be fitted so what we did was we measured the internal diameter inside here which is your 25. This is obviously going to be sitting centre of the van. You can measure it if you want, but I wouldn't measure too much off this because it's fiberglass. Basically, the centre point and the, and, the, and the roof is there, and it's your 12 and a half, and it's your 12 and a half, and then you've, you've compensated for your bends. We'll then measure now from that point, measuring the, the degrees and angle out to here, and then you can run down the back of the van, and then we'll have to just measure the back. So we'll do that now. Right, I just wanted to bring this little point up. Now, we're still here, still working away. Three different times now, it's absolutely poured down. I mean, it's absolutely soaked the van, front to back. Each time, we're having to wipe the whole roof clean so we can continue with our marks and reference points. And then 15, 20 minutes later, if that, it's raining again. And it is soul destroying. We're staying positive, we're staying active. No excuses, guys. If we're here, we're doing this. Yeah, okay, it's summer, but it's raining and we're still doing it, we're still going to achieve our goal, then, you know, you can be doing the same, 100%. Do it slow, do it smooth, and uh, get it right. Right, so the next stage, you've, you've done all this, you've got your 25 drilled either side and marked out. Then what you need to do is measure this what the width on this, which I know already is 45. So basically, see that? It's a little bit bigger than 45, but I've decided to do it a bit short because I want this to be quite tight. I don't want it to be loose. I want it to kind of be well fitted. So we're gonna do that 45. Basically, what you have to do now, you come out, you measure your 45 on the roof. So you've got to get a reference point and a reference point, get your center come out similar to here and what it what it actually works out being is it's four and a half inches from the inside of this lip so four and a half inches in mark it go along mark it four and a half get your line what i did was i cut a little piece up four and a half inches with a pencil on it and then ran it along the inside of the lip now these marks up here don't look the best but i know what they mean so and then what you do is you come past four and a half four and a half keep going go way too far on four and a half inches providing yours is the same so what you need to do is you need to measure this inside edge here down to here so this distance from here to here which this one is 20 on the inside 20 inches this one is 19 on the inside because obviously guys this is a fiberglass part and it's designed to be cut down to fit so what we're going to do is we're going to go we're going to knock an inch off this from there to there internally 18 inches the reason for that is because we'll know it'll both be equal because you've got to go at least off the lowest measurement and then because this is then going to match the straight piece running down the van we need to cut this at a 45 so we're going to lose an inch there so we've measured 18 so what you do is you get 18 on your tape measure like so then you come round to your front mark this is rough obviously because i'm trying to film put it on 18 like that and then basically swing obviously you've overdone these lines all the way down swing the tape measure round until it meets the line that you've done and at the point where it meets the line see there okay that's moved a little bit but basically see there that's where the two lines meet so then because that's where they come in that's where that panel is then going to be made to so that is where you then come down the side of the van so you've got to 
you're four and a half inches, because we're now coming into 18, so you're four and a half inches all the way down, both sides, make sure you always reference the other side. So you've measured that side, you've marked it, you've measured this side, you've marked it, you've checked it, you've checked it, you've checked it, you've referenced both sides, reference different, take different measure points, measurement points off the van, something that you know is uniform, and then you come to the back, nine inches, so let me just, you have to bear this footage, this footage is more about facts than actual, you know, looking good, so it's trying to get the information across you then come it's nine inches from this back lip yet again four and a half nine come in see these lines here do you reference lines because the back here is straight it's cut at a 90 degree whereas the front is obviously cut at a 45 because you have that kind of open well as access to get up and that for the bed for the bed once you've done all that check it check it check it i mean because of the rain granted we're about probably about three three hours in realistically without it raining and being really thorough this should probably take to get to this point i'd probably say a couple of hours there's no rush take your time get to this point now it's time to cut the top off and peel this thing open so let's get doing that now Right, so uh, I'll show you the progress so far. I'm not too happy about it, but this here was the nibbler. Works fine, but I mean, it's for this job, I don't recommend them. This cut here, as you can see, is from just one of these. Not even the battery stuff. So that's gone quite well. The front's gone quite well, but I wanted, to be honest, I'm not lying, I wanted these cuts to be absolutely perfect. And now doing this, especially for the first time, and I've tried different tooling so that this video, I can actually sit down at the end of this and say, look, these are the best tools to use. They're tried and tested. I've tried multiple different ones so that I'm kind of making the errors and I'm kind of having to like, not butcher, but make mistakes. So then at the end of this video, I can go, yeah, guys, use this. And then you'll start, and if you buy the same tool, then you will get the, the best job, I believe, physically possible. Probably like the pros are getting who are doing it day in, day out. We're going to carry on now. We've just changed the battery in the time lapse. Third battery now. We'll peel this thing off. Right, so once you've been round it all, and you've cut the lot all the way around following the lines that you did that we mentioned earlier run down here with your cut your your cutting tool of choice if you like you'll see that these support bars are all the way through there's two more which we've already taken out before i've remembered to film so stop when you hit them get a grinder grind through that top bit just on the roof and then go a bit further and then carry on with your other chosen cutting tool until you hit the next one and then when you're done you'll end up you'll peel the roof off as you saw on the time lapse and then you'll end up with these you've got to cut these i mentioned yesterday i did first before we started today but you will end up with these so then all you've got to do now is get a cutting saw and this is the one i've used to cut with the roof go down that cut that off obviously remove these and then you'll end up with this like this and obviously this now is when we start putting this on but we'll get to that in a minute so we'll carry on first and then come back Right guys, so now when you get to this bit, you've got it all cut out, you've got it all done, you've removed the support bars, you'll find this edge here is quite sharp, obviously it's, you know, it's cut metal it's going to be, so what I've done is, I've gone round and sanded it all down, you can do this by hand, or you can do it with a file, or you can do it with like a little electric sander if you're lucky enough to have one, if not, file's fine, I've filed all this edge all the way round, just so it's not sharp, particularly in here, these are really sharp. So I'll fold all that, I've gone all the way around. It's exposed steel, it's it's going to rust, it's going to at least get surface rust by the time you've even got to put in the carpet on. Most people's attitude towards it is, it doesn't matter because you can't see it, because once these, these are on, obviously they go like that, so you can't see it. 
But I don't like that because I know it's there and I know it's bare metal. So what I've done is I only had silver hammerite, so it probably still looks like bare metal now, but it's actually not. I've just got a little tub of hammerite, which I don't know where I've put it, and a little paintbrush. And I've spent the time and I've just gone round and I've just painted the edge, give it a bit more of a fighting chance so it's not so much bare metal. You can see that I've done a bit over the paint as well. You don't need to be too fussy because that part and that panel will actually rivet on to about here so you won't see it. Now I know this is underneath and it does bug me a little bit but I'd rather have a little of excess paint like that and no bare metal edge than just put that on and leave a bare metal edge and just be like oh yeah whatever you know you're not going to see it you can't you know I'd rather have it like that. I think that's a better job gone all the way around. Obviously now you can see we're up against that main frame which is why you want to get that in to begin with and you also want it tight touching because that now supports the roof and then when you're at this side like this 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 point like this you get three of these bars in the kit they come bare metal most in fact yet again a lot of people just fit them bare metal you're not going to see them don't really mind it's going to take forever to rust but i don't like that attitude so i've just sprayed them primed them quickly and then just put a quick coat of black on them you know i wasn't being too fussy but i prefer to fit them like this knowing i've given it a fighting chance than just fit it and leave bare metal everywhere once you've done that they go here so if you come to the back if you, if you finish about an inch from the back, we'll start about an inch from the back, you'll see where the supports was before these. So you've got to put these in, so get someone to hold this up, mark where you've got a drill, take it off, drill the holes, and then get someone to hold it, put it up, drill through this, and then in the kit you'll get these, you get all the hardware, so it's an Allen key head, a couple of little washers, and then a 10 mil nut. Put that in, and then you won't need anyone to hold it, and then you can put that in. But how much better is that with a painted edge and with a black? I know, I know it's going to get covered, but I still feel that it's better to do a, as nice a job as possible. And that's all in. So basically now, you've got that to support and strengthen the roof. I'll put the one in this side. There's obviously the main one you put in the front, and then we'll get the back one in, and I'll show you that. So coming to fit in the hinges. Now, if you open them up like that, They'll be wrote on just to give you a guide. So it's like that front, top left. This is actually the top right. But what one way you'll notice is that notch there goes on the outside. So like that. Because we tried it the other way and they don't sit right. See those bolts look? That nut hits there. This must be labelled wrong. And obviously it falls back as well. Right, so when you come to the hinges, these hinges aren't on the actual pop top yet. So you've got an Allen key that looks like that, but it's at the back there. So it's the one closest to the back. Take that out. And that lines up with that hole. So basically, you'll see there, look. That's that one. And then put a tech screw in there in the middle, put a tech screw in there and put a tech screw in there, so basically you've got one fixed mount from the original hole, you can adjust this then move this whole thing forward and backwards slightly to get minor adjustment just to tweak it but they're just tech screws those, it doesn't come with those, I've bought the tech screws and you'll use the original one from the roof anyway and then it'll be like that or like that and you'll notice that it actually falls back like that, if I'm being honest the nut does touch the body there. Now I've sanded it down. I can't really do anything about it. You could buy a shallower 10 mil, but it, you need to have a nylock on it because otherwise it'll wind loose. I'm going to leave it for now and see how we get on. But it does touch the body there, and these are very close. But that's just the way it is, I think. You can't see it when the pop top's down, but I just wanted to show you just so that in case you fit yours and think, oh my god, I've done something wrong, then you now you've seen mine. Alright, so make sure you grab the six remaining Allen keys out of the hardware, and these are for the hinges. They go in the roof first. Make sure you put rubber sealed washers on, because obviously they're what create the weather seal inside there and keep it watertight. So put those in to the pop top first.
Okay, so this is the end of day one. This is where we've got to. I'd say seven hours we've been on this. Now, just me and Mark did 80% of today's work and then the last 20% we had a few extra helpers. Obviously, we got rained off a lot this morning. So it's not seven hours solid. Times are relevant really, but I'm just giving you a reference just so you've got an idea of, you know, if you think you're not a dab hand at some like this, you can just double the time really. So if you probably say three days, very, very achievable. This is day one and we haven't got the struts on yet. So I've still got the struts and the dampers to fit. Still got all the canvas and that to fit. This is the main labour intensive work and this is the main part done. So once I've finished, I've got a couple of bits of riveting to finish. Once I've done that, I'll show you that. That'll be tomorrow now. We're gonna have another night in the week. I'm gonna leave it a few days. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Or I'm trying to make this as, as information packed as physically possible. Right, so we're coming into day two. Obviously, we left it as you see it now. The second part now, we're going to get the struts on so we can hold the pop top up. So we can then start doing the canvas, get that down. But also, we can finish off a couple of the pop rivets and start tidying a few things up. Because at this point now, you can't hold it up. I mean, not for long anyway. You need the struts on. So the struts on and the rest of the rivets is the second part, if you like. And then the canvas will be the last part and the part of completion. So we'll start that now. I'll flick you back over to time lapse. Enjoy. Right, so I'll quickly, I'll quickly get this bit. I'll quickly get this bit before we go past it and be, be too further on. So these, this hinge will already be on. So this, the struts that come in the kit, come with the balls on the end. So let me show you. They come with these four on, but they're not needed. Those four because they're already attached to the pop top. They must be bought. They must be outsourced, and they just send them with it. So I take those off. Then get someone. To, need a couple of you. Get someone to hold the pop top up. Clip. Take these little clips out. Clip it onto there, and then I'll I'll give you a full measurement for this at the end. But then you come down and you get your tech screws and tech screw into the body there and there, and then that then struts either side note that the ram is at the lowest part so the thinner part of the strut goes at the bottom the thicker part goes at the top and then same this side clip it in clip it in get someone to look at the front so that you can then see and reference that it's it's level when you've done that tech screw you will have first just tech screw this one in that'll hold that bracket do the one the other side and then when you've got that all clipped in get somebody to hold it pull this ram off and then get the back tech screw in because you can't do it with a ram on because it's very difficult and then clip that back on over it that was a quick run through and i hope it wasn't too complicated so i just point this out on your drill if you get some tape and tape it up like that or if you get like a little bit of hose like some fuel hose or something and then cut it till it comes to your desired depth and then push it on what this does is we've all done it you're drilling and when you're drilling you you know especially if you haven't got the best drill bits you apply more and more pressure and then eventually when you go through you wail the chuck so you wail this part here into the panel that you're drilling the last thing you want to do is do that and scratch anything or you don't want to do it snap the drill off the end, slip and go down your quarter panel or something. In doing this, you basically hit, as you drill through, it goes and hits there and stops. And then that stops at that depth. And also, that's a soft edge, so you don't damage anything. So that's a top tip, that. Right, so I thought I'd just show you this. Now, I appreciate it's not the best light, but once you've done, I recommend this canvas will be screwed up, will be four screws. So when you get it, it'll all be rolled up and it'll all be screwed up. So I didn't, because I was a bit impatient, but I recommend getting all these fiberglass panels riveted down and done, and the struts on. Potentially you might struggle with the struts just because they're up against it, but definitely get this done before you unravel it all. Because I was impatient, and now it's kind of in my way. I'm having to ratchet strap it down a little bit so it doesn't open too much because the wind today is horrendous 
and it's just ripping it and it's just blowing it so don't make the mistakes I've made keep it screwed up for now but one tip for this now there might be a couple of you doing it but I'm not fortunate enough at the moment to have a second pair of hands so there's just me what you want to do let me try and show you here if you watch you see how it moves down slightly rivet all the top in first apply a lot of pressure hold it as far away as it will go far far in as it will go rivet the top but then the bottom you want this to be under a little bit of tension so the bottom you'll see that it will actually go that way slightly get your partner or someone to apply pressure on it like that with a hand when you drill and rivet now if you haven't got anyone get yourself a bit of timber measure the distance from that inside edge to that inside edge measure it the, 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 that end the middle and the front you'll see that they should all roughly be about the same make the timber a little bit too big so you have to squash it in so that when it's squashed in not too much but when it's squashed in it will hold that panel like that and it will hold it down and under which is what I'm trying to explain and then now I can drill and rivet this on my own and all I do is I bring it down with me so it's quite easy now look because that rivets in place well if I probably bring it to here trying not to damage any of my uh, canvas you'll see there look that's a lot harder to do and then once that's riveted it will pull up as easy as that one did so that's just another quick top tip that you can potentially benefit from if you're doing your own so I'm going to attempt to try and film just showing you what I mean here first of all each rivet I measured 12 inches on the top to make them all uniform and I worked it out and that's a good amount of load between each one so what I'm going to do under here is they're going to be 12 inches the same however they're going to start 6 inches in what that means is they will end up, say if this was the top 12 inch span because I've started 6 in before I measure my 12 they'll like be here so the one above there is there if you can see that which ends up in the middle of those so I've got pressure applied above here on the top and then opposite sides then there opposite sides and it's just it's better than putting them together so I recommend that but now can you see I don't know how well you can see and apologies for the light you know I haven't got the best setup it's getting better and my filming's getting better but my lighting is minimal at the moment so bear with it but what we're gonna do is I've got these marked, you won't see them, but we've got, we've got our wood to create the tension as I mentioned. You pull that across to the area that you're going to work next, like that. Check it. Yeah, see, I can't push that under anymore. I'm happy with that as far down as it's going to go. And that, because that uh, fiberglass is like that, it kind of, once the wood's in, it squares it off. So that's where it needs to go. I've got some okay drill bits, not the best, but they're also not the worst. So first of all, I'll start with a 3mm drill going into the middle of this wood, roughly where my mark is anyway. So we're going to come in about, probably say, let's try and work it out for you, I'll probably say an inch. We'll come in an inch because there's not much body under here, so you can't do it up here. It's got to be quite close to the edge. So we're coming in an inch, which is... There. Drill that through, so that's a pilot hole with a little three mil drill bit. We've now got our five mil drill bit because obviously those five mil rivets with our little setup on to stop driving the chuck into the uh, the work area. So now we start. Battery's going awesome. We'll start now. You don't need to be drilling fast, just drill slow. You don't need to overheat the drill bit. There we go. So that's through. We'll get our little rivet gun and our rivets. Put that on, rivet it until you snap it off. 
and then you go all the way along. This you could do uneven if you like. A lot of people just do any gap they like. They're, they're a bit like this and that's including some companies because their outlook is, well, this is getting carpeted. But I kind of think for 30 seconds of measurements, it's nicer to have it looking like that. It just looks professional and I believe deep down inside when you go to sleep at night, you kind of just feel a little bit more proud of yourself and you know that this van is 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 done well i mean if i ever sell this i could just reference them to this build and i'd like to think that most people will think that it's done quite good however i'm not selling it that isn't the goal or anything like that so it doesn't it's kind of irrelevant but i just want you guys to take pride in your work because generally i believe that normally if you take pride in your own work and you take your time a lot of the time let's face it you can do better work at home on your cars than than most trades tradesmen would do reason for that is because this can take me three days instead of one day um, bad example maybe but basically you can just take longer you can be more for it you can do a better job so let's carry on and I'll shut up right so just to show you guys the rivets that I bought and used on all the fiberglass pieces I bought the ones with the wide headed kind of washer on them the thickness should be five yeah five mil so they're five mil thick the length is approximately 16 mil so if we went for 16 mil long 5 mil thick 15 mil head right so it's canvas time using the plastic trim strips that you get in the kit we're gonna pin down this canvas now always start at the back you want the back to be level so if you're looking from the side it'll be straight so it won't be in like that it won't be out like that it'll be straight start at the back keep the tension, get all the back row done and then work your way forward because then you can taper the front one to lose the excess and the ones that you see that have got creases now in generally they've either started at the front or they've just messed it up halfway through so we're going to do this now, I've just cut this, this is 46 inches that I'm going to do from the back so I'm going to just end here to here, 46 inches I'm going to get all this one in I'm going to take my time. I've been waiting to do this for two weeks now because of weather, so I'm going to take my time. All we're going to do now is we're going to find the centre and we're going to work out and I'm going to make even gaps for my bolts to tech screw this down because you want one, I want it to look as beautiful as possible and uniform, possibly going off these in the middle of these perhaps. But two, you want it to be uniform and even pressure all the way along. You don't want it to be to the side of the trim bit or you don't want it to be uneven across the load. So this is going to be what helps and holds the canvas down. But also this is what's going to give you your edge to seal it to, to make it watertight. So do a good job of this. This is very important. Right, so I've worked out the centre and I've spread it across evenly. Decided to go for one here on the low part and then the raised part and then the low part I'm going to go for. I'm actually going to overdo this because the better the pressure and the tension you have along there the more likelihood it's going to seal without the sealer and then the sealer is just like a better case scenario. So I've made this back panel just shy of 44 inches. Now spread in between a 4 inch intervals what I've done them so that they sit centres of these now obviously because you have, you can't do it at the flat bit which is ideally where you'd want it but you're going to have to do it over the ribs so you're going to have to pull it down it's going to have to be pulled into the wells so I'm going to do the centre first and then I'm going to maybe sp try and work my way out and spread the load out to the end right so if you've got someone helping you doing this then you can just hold it to where you think straight from the back and they will be able to say whether it's straight or not you kind of want it like that straight at the rear but I haven't got anyone to help so what I've done is I've made sure this strap here and this strap here are level either side sitting on on the inside of this gutter because then that means this is central and I've just used what is like a welding magnet that you use if you're welding stuff together and I've just used that magnet to put on there onto the body just to hold it down so I can check so I now know that is exactly where I need it so going off the back here I've done it from this edge here to this edge here and I'm going to mark it. You want this perfectly straight down, you don't want it back or forward, you want it straight. I recommend get your first free in, once you make sure it's centre and that get free in, 
You'll see what I mean about that take shape. This stuff bends quite nice, so it will take the form of the body. You'll see here, they're quite close. But make sure you're not hitting the harness. Even if you have to unclip it, pull it away. Make sure you're not hitting that. Go outside now, make sure this is straight, make sure you're happy. And make sure that when you do it, get the centre one in. And then pull this with one hand as you screw that in with the other. And then don't just do that now. Happy days, that's not how you do it. So each hole now, make sure you pull this down like that and then pin it down so it's tight. So this crease here, this is not what you want. So this area here without creases, that's what you want. And then you want tension on this so that when it's up, tension in this at the same time, which will in turn keep it crease free and keep it a bit better weather tight because you know the creases and that will compromise it over time. But if you keep it tight, then it should keep it in nice order. Alright, so that back's done. See how wavy it is? That's because it's following the body. It's exactly what I want. I have actually drilled into a couple of... This box section here, it has actually drilled into that a couple of times. Which is kind of good, because it kind of reinforces everything even a little even more. But some, some ones have just been close. Look, to prevent rattles and squeaks later on, I'm going to actually go in with a grinder and just cut these ends off because if everything's touching like that you will you will have squeaks and rattles and that drives me insane so once you've got all your back in and you're happy when you're going to do this run i know you can't really see that guys but if you if you fold let me try and hold on get a light on to show you a little bit better if you fold that lip there this is impossible if you fold that lip kind of so tension the corner like that and then fold that lip over so that like that see how it's coming down and then going towards the front of the bus and then when you pin that corner in pin on top of on top of that stitched area there that will pull the corner a lot tighter but now now you've done the back what you need to do is you need to ratchet strap the front down so bring the front down a couple of inches so that you'll then put all the canvas in position now and then when you release the ratchet strap it will actually pull the canvas tight because if you don't can't you kind of don't want the roof at its maximum height all the time because one you're maxing it out but two you're not pulling the tension on the canvas whereas if you ratchet strap it down or pull it down a couple of inches do the canvas really tight when you actually put the pop top up for good then without ratchet strap on it will actually stop where the canvas pulls it tight enough to stop and it will look a lot better doing that if you measure off that corner pick a point of reference on the body somewhere that you're happy with measure that corner and measure the other corner so that they're both the same because you don't want the, the pop top to be when it's up you don't want it to be like that you want it to be level like that so re reference both sides we started here, I've done that fold that I mentioned, so that looks really neat now, I'm really happy with that, I've got one to get in the corner, but I don't know how easy that's going to be, I might need a 90 degree drill bit to get that last one, but I've done three on the end, I've done three very close, then I've done seven inch intervals, I was going to do three and a half, but I thought it was a little bit overkill, so I'm happy with seven inches all the way along, I'm going to do that, so what you do is, you start with your corner, ideally you could do the second person, I mean I've done doing this on my own, but you pull it down and then pin that one in, and then as you're going along, you'll see, see how all this is like creased, well when I put this one in, I'll pull it tight, and then see how, okay it looks creased on the camera, but it has been folded up for weeks, sitting in this van, and then when you release this, it will all pull it all tight, in theory. Good little tip, if you remember this bit of wood we made to make the spacing equal for the fiberglass when you pop riveted it in. If you're working on your own, it actually, it actually doubles up now as a workbench. So, I mean, that works quite well for me. So, keep going all the way along. I'm going to get to about here. I haven't done these the full length. I've stopped these at this point here. So, I don't because I don't know how far we're going to need to go forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this length in to here and then I'm going to go to this side I'm going to get this length in to here the same 
and then I can see and work out how far we're going to have to go forward. Okay, so back's done. Really happy with that. This corner's in. I've got a couple to put in that corner, the same as that side, but I'm just waiting out for that. It looks way more creased on camera than what it actually is, but I mean, it doesn't matter too much. It's all really tight, I can fucking show you. It's quite tight. I mean, I've been pulling on this quite a bit. No pun intended, but I'm trying to get it the best I can because I mean they look just looks amazing, guys. When it's uh, when it's in, this is phenomenal. I'm kind of I didn't really want a pop top, but I'm kind of getting on tune now. I'm enjoying this. Obviously, I went to this here, the join for the front V. I did three at the end there, so I got my equal spacings all the way along, and then I did three at the end there just to load up that end part. Same on this one. Back to equal spacings, and then three at the end, which I've only got the one in. The one in. So now I've just measured this. This is 19 inches. You're going to have to fold it the same. Can you see? Bear with it. This is uh, difficult. Can you see how that is folded again? The same as the back. So going off that crease, that kind of fabric strap, I don't know what you would call it technically, it will then be facing backwards, so if you was to then follow the direction of travel it looks in, it will then look and go to look at that one. I folded them in that way, so you know, you're welcome to do the same, I kind of feel it works, you kind of end up like that, and then I've got to work across the front, so I'm just putting in little pieces now, these two front pieces I'm going to get, and that's going to give me the distance I'm going to end to at the front, keeping it tight, and then I can do the front piece, and then finally we can step back and see how it looks. So basically, done the front now. I matched it so that they kind of end on the inside. This run here lands on the inside of the front run. Yet again, even spacing. I've quickly screwed these on for now. These go all the way through into the you know the cross member, like the cross frame that you put in. They go into there, so they're really tight. You've got to put these two on as well. You'll see there's a raised part there on the actual top of the pop top, right at the front. So probably about four inches back from the material. They've got to screw into there, so do your measurements and measure it so they're equal. Make sure they're the same as these, because these are going to be for the straps. So when it's down, you ratchet strap it down to these so you want them level. Put the grab handles on as well, which is the next raised part, because this is a strengthened part of the roof. So this next raised part here is where the grab handles go. Yet again, you can have these where you want really, but yet again, make sure they look uniform, so measure them the same. That's pretty much it. You have to excuse the light. One thing you have to remember is when you close this, these straps here need to be closed. So that one there needs to be clipped together. And this one here needs to be clipped into there. They pull the material sides in, so when you pull it down, it brings everything in and it doesn't get trapped on the rails or on the hinges and that when you shut the roof. So when you've got to this point, you now need to go round and seal all this. This lip here where the, the canvas rolls round and meets the body, you need to put a bead of seal around here. Now, looking at a lot of the companies, it seems mixed feelings as to how they do it. A lot use black, but I mean, I've just been to Busfest this weekend, and some of these expensive canvases and that, what the these expensive pop tops that companies fit, they do such a horrendous job of this seal. I get it's a bit of a tricky job, but it's kind of the last details that make or break a kind of excellent job, really. And some of them was just shocking. I'm not saying this is going to be any good. You can use transparent or black. I think personally, looking from the show the weekend, I think black looks a little bit messy. I'm going to use transparent. I haven't done that yet because I haven't got any. And also, I don't know what to use yet to be honest. So I'm going to do a little bit more research. So that won't be in this video. So you, but you don't really need to see it anyway. Just run around the whole perimeter, a bead of sealer, 
seal this in but you know you guys can do that if you want it to I'm just gonna put it on and kind of leave it but if you really want it, if you get a bowl of water and keep wetting your finger wipe your finger clean wet it you'll smear that you'll smear the sealer without it sticking to your finger but you'll only do like a an eight nine inch run and then what you need to do is you need to do that and clean your finger wet it and keep and you'll go all the way around you'll do a nice job so that's that bit what needs doing so when it's closed close it halfway I don't know where you can see it, but close it and then try and fold this the best you can so it's neat and it also doesn't come past here because that's what you're trying to achieve when it's closed. A little strap to hold it down. Obviously these have to be on and then make sure it's all inside. When you put the wood on, if you put like a wooden bed on here which will also hinge up, this will be all held up with that. But for now, that's the result that you're going for, like that. This is what it's like closed. I have got to, the last other job, other than the seal on the canvas, is I've got to put a seal here. There's like a, um, a windage strip, like a seal that you put on. You bond it on, and it, all it does, it acts as like a wind deflector. So it deflects the wind up over this channel here, because at the moment the wind will inevitably try to get under there and lift the pop top up. So that seal there needs to go on. The reason why it's on, not on yet is because I've struggled to get a second pair of hands and I've been away with work and stuff myself to actually get it on. However, I have got one, but you know, it's not on for now. But you know, if, if you want me to do a video later on, I can when it's on, but it literally just is a seal. A lot, some people take them to the end of this channel here. I'm gonna stop it here. So it's only gonna go from there to there and it still allows the air and that to get under and the rainwater and that to get out but some people do and two, some companies do take it to the end i'm not going to i'm going to stop it here it's going to be on it's going to be bonded on and it's going to be just as close to this as i can get it flick the window over the top so it doesn't try and lift that but i have got a nice little tip I'm trying to get out the sun i have got a little tip for you for that now some companies are asking 100 odd pounds for these seals because they don't come with this pop top so you have to buy your own you can drive them without i'm a little concerned i've still got a ratchet strap on just in case it was to lift just to try and add a little bit extra pressure because these two straps aren't exactly the the strongest of things however they will charge a lot of money don't buy a specific top pop top one off ebay you can buy a dash seal that goes down the bottom of your dash and it sits along all the all the length of the dash and it's to stop things and coins and books and pieces of paper falling down the back of the dash well those seals are pretty much exactly the same as what the companies are charging 100 odd pound 80 pound for for this seal it's exactly the same and it's nine pound 99 delivered so i've bought that so i'm going to seal it on and believe you me guys do not buy the specific pop top ones nine pound 99 ones for the dash are exactly the same so I need to show you this so you don't make the same mistake. When you put this front crossbar on, you have to remove a bracket from here. And that bracket is what holds the grab handle on. Now you can modify them and cut them down and squash them at the back and you can refit them. Now I didn't want to do that because at the time I wasn't really bothered. It was raining on and off and I was just concentrating on getting this done. So I wasn't too fussed. Although if you don't have that backing on, you can't have the grab handle on when you build the trim back up and put the roof lining back on. However, you can get kind of like sunglasses kind of fold down case holders. I'll probably screw one of those in because they can screw into the into the trim and not really need any load or anything like that because there's no weight in it. So I'll probably do that to fill the gap. But one thing I did do wrong, which you need to make sure you don't do, is this harness ideally needs to be above here now i can't it's a big job to take all this back out i mean i did it good there but here i forgot i'm either gonna try i'm either gonna have to cut it all and join it with a nice plug so i can get it up the back and then make it disconnectable or i'm gonna have to see if i can squash it up behind the headlining which i'm gonna have a go at now either way it's fixable just remember that put that harness above this bar and save yourself this hassle Right, so now it comes to putting the headliner back on. You want to put it up, leave it stripped so all this is still out. Hold it in position with a couple of the clips at the front, a screw there as well. At least then you know it's 100% where it should be. As you can roughly see, you'll know if it's not right. And then come to the top and then mark here. Excuse the light. Mark here 
where your fiberglass pop top panels are now because of the difference look how much let's just get a light for that look how much opened up over where the headlining would have gone before it's mad so go around it mark a pen where that is so when you've cut it out you've cut it out to this edge here so you want to go in that is you want to measure that distance there and you want to probably i'd probably say you want to be in an inch and a half all the way around so measure from there to an inch and a half out which we'll do now so i'm gonna go for we're gonna go for two inches follow this line two inches in mark a new line and then cut that out and if you're a little bit worried about it do less first and then keep trying it and then cutting bits out at a time because if you it's better to cut less out and have the chance or the opportunity to cut more out than it is to cut too much out and then you can't fix it so i'm going to do that now right so i'm just getting ready to put this back up this is the modified headlining obviously you can see the shape i've had to cut out here is where it's going to be going obviously i have insulated that as you can see i've sound deadened the roof to the best where i can really this part here in case you're wondering I've been lucky enough to actually, because there's no handle on anymore, I can tuck the fr the uh, harness there and there's a gap for it here. And it sits in that gap really nice, so I'm lucky about that. But also I want to show you this. These bars that you put in here are obviously a tight fit to get in and, and, and they fit really well. But, you know, they, they don't follow exactly the same shape as the body. Because this angle, you're not really going to bend it well. All these bolts are tight both sides but you will see a gap underneath so here there's quite a big gap and then it touches and touches then there's quite a big gap here because it doesn't follow the contours of the body these are still tight so it'll still work exactly as it should but i just decided to i know it's a little bit messy but i decided to proper push up hard the sealant and bond that i'm going to use for the the weather seal across the front i've used that and i've actually filled all the gap behind this with cedar now why have i done that i've done that for two reasons one to hopefully prevent any rattles in the future or any vibrations or anything like that and two because obviously that bond in it now it's got no movement it's got although it's a, a rubberized substance if you like behind it's still going to be contacting that so there's not a, a void where it can move or anything even though it shouldn't move anyway I just think that's a little bit better. I know it's not the neatest, but I'm, ga I'm aiming for it to be practical over neat. So I'll just give you a quick walk around to show you what the finished result's like. This is it with the glass in looking out. Got some of the interior back in as well. I'll come around the front for that. You have to bear with it. you have to uh, bear with it with the sunlight. It's really sunny today. I've gone for quite low on the pop top compared to how high up you can go, just because we're not really actually going to be sleeping up there, and I haven't got anyone to go going up there or anything yet. So I, I, I kind of prefer it low. I think they look better low than really high. I don't like the look of them really high. However, I could have gone higher. But once you've put it to this height and you've screwed it into the canvas and that, you can't go any higher now. You'll obviously have holes where you've screwed through all the way along. You can see roughly how high I have gone. Because these, if you look at others, these are almost basically vertical. So it's not far off at the back. The front's probably a good, I'd probably say, six to eight inches lower than it potentially should be. But like I said, I'm just using this for stand-up room for cooking. And that's pretty much it. And as you can see, there's ample room for me. I mean, that's I'm happy with that. And I prefer, even if the kids or anything go up there, when I've got kids, I mean, they'll be that small. They'll still have loads of room. And I just really, really, really prefer the look of it like that than so high up but bear with the sunlight because it's quite bright this morning but this is a bit of a walk around now just to show you what it's finished like i know i haven't done the sealer in but you know you guys can work that out or i'll do a video later on if you're that fussed just to show you the sealer i 
I've actually got this booked in at a body shop. I am going for the colour coded roof. Ideally, it should have been done before I fitted it, yes, I know, but it's the way it's ended, so I don't mind. Still think it looks really good. Eventually, I'm going to take the hinges off and powder coat them black. You can see through the glass look. It's not as black. It does come up a lot blacker on the camera than it actually is, to be fair. Now, I kind of wish... I don't regret doing the glass. I love the glass to bits. I needed to do it. But I do, if I'm honest, I wish I only put it in this side, where the cooker and that's going to be. Because, I'll show you... I've got two glass, I prefer them without the glass, and if I did it again, I would put VW glass in that side, because if you go to a VW van centre, they're not actually that expensive for the glass, for the, what actually sit flush, I think they look a lot better, but I would only put one in the cooker side now, and this here I would just have a plain glass, because I think a plain glass all the way along actually looks better, but I mean, you live and learn, I'm still really happy with it, I, I'm, I'm still like... Still over the moon with the results. I feel I've done a good job. I'm still doing a good job, so I'm happy with it. Inside's back together more so now. So I'll show you a bit of that. So I've got half the seats back in. I hope this sunlight's not going to wreck this too much. Got a bit of leather trim done. I did that ring gloss back instead of the brushed aluminium. I kind of prefer it. Got the pillars back in, got the sun visors in. Oh, wow, you can see that, guys. The roof lining's in now, look. That cheap £4 mod. Obviously, all this will be carpeted eventually, and these will probably be black, but for now, I'm coming to a busy period of work, and I just decided that I'd rather throw it back together. I've insulated and sound it and all of this, but I just thought I'd rather get it back together and then just enjoy it as a bit more comfort for the, for the time being before I actually move on and either take stuff back out just to kind of like do a bit of a better job or I don't really need to to be fair I don't like doing things twice but who knows but there you go so that's the end of this video hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed it and you learnt something now don't get me wrong the lighting isn't the best and the sunlight and stuff like that it, and the audio is not the best however guys this isn't a video to be all fancy and all the best really i'm just trying to add as much value and information so that you guys can do this yourself kind of not underwrite the companies but you can have a bit more pride in your own van because you haven't had to spend two three four five whatever the expense is you've actually done it yourself now these aren't the best pop tops they're a happy medium for the price you know it's added value to the van it's added bed space and I'm happy with it. I'm proud that I've done it. You probably will be too. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming back. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.